Hi, my name's Adam, and this is my Reese 3D deck. So, so this is the Reese deck. Um, it's completely token focused. Uh, mana ramping tokens, bash you over the head with them. It's uh, it's pretty phenomenal. So I like so some standard some standard mana ramping, um, some token support. Knight of the Reliquary, of course, tutors for you know lands like Core Haven, things like that um, to fight with. And making tokens indestructible is really valuable because Wrath of God's still played in Commander, unfortunately. Just staple cards. Um, I, I really like this guy. I think people forget that he's green removal, and it's pretty sweet to like trouble your wolves and then like kill something that you shouldn't. It's like a giant wolf pack of, uh, of death. Um, and this guy is really interesting. Um, there's so many anthem effects like Mars Wake and things like that um, that could be run, but people will ignore him, and then suddenly you start making three threes, or like you make like five three threes at once, and uh, gets entertaining pretty quick. Um, Slip Flash Spider fights in the air. Um, I think that's probably the best green card ever. But might be hyper bull there. Um, I like Oversoul of Dust because there's just so many there's so many times like you just need to fight with like a good creature and you can usually fight through the, the hate decks that'll fight on tokens, so at least still have like a body that's hard for them to get rid of that you can suit up with a, a sword or something. And the usual suspects going on here. Um, I love Deadwood Tree Folk. Overrunning is probably my number one kill. Uh, you get like two dozen tokens out and it's game over. Um, and then Hornet Queen is like my favorite addition from the, the new Commander uh, box releases. Um, I absolutely, absolutely love this card. I finally got to like quadruple the tokens off of it with Reese, and it's just as silly and disgusting as you would think. Um, and here we're getting this, um, some spells, so there's you know, a little bit of spot removal uh, to help bust up stuff um, and tutors. map is probably my favorite my favorite artifact to add to any commander deck but just the number of times I've been able to to go get and, and keep my mana going and go get like a, a Gaius Cradle and just like go off on a turn um, yeah Sylvan Scrying is definitely, definitely good but I really like that artifact too because I can get it with Enlightened Tutor more mana ramping and regrowth a staple, a lot of staple cards in here. This is pretty much my home for all of that. Um, Sterling Grove gets uh, privilege position like 90% of the time. The other 10% of the time, I already have privilege position, so it protects itself at that point. Uh, little tutors. Um, sort of feast and famine um, is something I picked up at. The release weekend, uh, the spoil version, but uh, I immediately knew that with all the green decks in Commander, I would be untapping, and that seems like a pretty good, pretty good deal with Reese. You know, double tokens and then tap all of them in, and then do other stuff. So um, I've been doing that before Cobblade made it popular. Uh, Awakening Zone, um, the most absurd, the most absurd opening I ever had was. Uh, forest into soul ring into a turn to awakening zone and I just made like made Reese and then just started doubling Eldrazi spawn token I just made like 20 mana on turn like 7 or something it was it was absolutely disgusting or shards of course you can't have a token deck from four shards uh, I have a couple wrath effects in here um just the wall is worth the note because I've got so many tutors I usually just go get the card that I need and just go get it directly instead of play spinning sensors to running top and fetch lands for like 10 turns um, but crystal ball is really good because it's because it does dig so you don't need to you don't need to spend so much time shuffling commander and I think that that's worth uh, worth noting uh, just more staples and removal Um, 
of course, Rings of the Bright Hearth is really, really dumb with Reese. I don't think there's any dumber card. Um, Martyr's Cause is probably the best card in this deck. Um, people who haven't seen it before look at it and they get a little confused. And then they get really confused when I chump block with tokens and sacrifice half of them to save the other half. It, it's really, really good at mitigating damage. It stops stuff like Steel Hellkite from wiping your tokens because you prevent the damage. Um, it stops spells, uh, you know, all kinds of things. Um, and people forget that your tokens just now make you like half invulnerable. Just more tutors. Um, Glare of Subdual, obviously uh, pretty good tokens. Um, I still like Old Johnny. You know, just plus one, plus one counter sometimes. This is yeah, he's he's still good with tokens. Like people people don't overreact to him anymore, so I get away doing disgusting things. There's Natural Order. Um, funny story about Natural Order. I used to have Satanial Hierophants in the deck, so I made 1,400 tokens facing down. Uh, a pernicious deed, and I natural ordered four Hierophants, made 1400 mana, and the users of the Bright Hearth with Sensei's Divining Top to draw my deck, make Ant Queen, make Chroma's Memorial, and attack everyone on one turn. So, natural order is pretty good. The Mind's Eye is worth space dollars to these days. More tutors, um, Sadeborn Moose, um, I've seen like entire games fought over her. She's She's a nice lady. She'll treat you right. Mario's Wake. Um, Garrick Primal Hunter is, of course, the newest addition to the deck. Because um, what's better than making, like, 1-1 one, one, or 2-2s? Two, but 3-3s, three, three's, and then maybe, like, 6-6s. Six, and if I ever get the ultimate that in Commander, I'm pretty sure somebody will flip the table. It's a privileged position. Um, I really like Hildrazi Monument just because Reese can make a token even if like they kill all the all my other tokens for some reason. Um, but indestructible flying tokens are like three times as unfair. Um, I picked up the new doubling season this weekend, so um, I think I accidentally overpaid for it, which was my mistake. I should have should checked it out, but. Um, you know, I had taken doubling season out, and then when they announced the judge foil, I was like, I'm pretty sure it has to go back in. So, there it is. It's in Zenith. Um, Akroma's Memorial is probably the other, like, half of my kills with the deck. It just it just lets you do really unfair things. Um, makes it hard to bust up. It's the best tutor of all with the token deck. Who is other than Oblivion uh, Stone is the only only wipe on the board, um, and I've also won games just by wiping the board and making like ten tokens. So it still works. Anthem effect, mana ramping. I've I've actually made angels with this before, and it's stunning. Uh, and then we hit. Um, we hit some of the mana, so you know, some of the usual some of the usual suspects in here. Cradle to make way too much mana than you should. Um, with Windbris Heights, you know, I'll play it on turn one and trigger it on turn five or turn four. Um, it's a lot of fun to, to dump a Marari's Wake in that early. Um, I actually really like Outpost because it's your other lands are distracting, and I always at least keep a token generator um, that's reasonably cheap. You know, let's be on tap. Of course, Reef, the, the Vastwood, is uh, the silliest land, I think, in here. For, uh, I mean, other than going off with, like, with all Primus, you can, you can just make, you know, 4-4 four, four tokens one turn. Seems okay to do that. Follow. You know, some, some land destruction going on here. But this could probably be Wasteland, but it's okay. That's about it. I just have uh, just have the rest of my rest of my mana base and basic lands after this. I think uh, I don't if there's anything left exciting. Yeah, this is basic lands. Thanks for watching CMDR decks. Please subscribe and favorite.